around page five. My oh my I'm not going to start on the top. I'm going to start with Ella. Um, Ella Marabzera. It's 5A, but it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8, 9, 10. <laughs> okay, so it's five A. Okay, so the um the, the, the Mishnah says if you have a person outside the house, you call them the poor man. And you have a person inside the house, you call them the house owner. And the poor man sticks his hand in and gives something to the balabayas. Or he takes something from the balabayas, the, the house owner, the homeowner. So we said that that is uh, considered a transfer of uh, location. And he's chayev. But the Gemara had a question. The only time that it's considered it a transfer, transferring, moving from one location to another, is if there's an akira, you have to lift it up, and there's a hanach, and you put it down. We had a problem. An akira needs, needs to be taken off a location of for tzvachim, for handrails. And the putting it down needs to be on a location of four handrails. So putting it into the balabayas's hand, or the, or, or the reverse, the balabayas putting it into his hand, is not a location of four, of four cubits. So we tried to say, going according to this opinion, going according to that opinion, that holds that it doesn't need to be four cubits, all different types of explanations. Ella, rather. Amar Abzeira. Abzeira says, Hamani Acherim. We have to say that the Mishnah that says that it doesn't, uh, you can put it into his hand, and that's considered a transfer. Nakira and a Hanacha. <laughs> the one that we thought was going to be Rebbe. We thought it was Rebbe before. Now we say it's Acherim. Acherim is usually the mayor. The Tanya. It's taught in a Braisa. Acherim Aymrim. Others say, Ahmad bin Kaima Vikibel, Chayev. Akam bin Kaima Vikibel is Papa. This is sort of um, like a sports. Uh, what do they call it? Sports science? This is sports tomorrow. Uh, if someone threw something to someone else, and uh, the, there's a thrower and a catcher, right? The, the receiver. The receiver is standing still. So then the person that threw it, it's considered like he placed it down into the receiver's hand. But if the receiver was, was running or moving while he was catching it, so then it did not actually land. It was still being moved as it was being caught. And when does it stop? When the receiver stops. So who does the placing it down? The receiver. That's considered an act of transfer that was performed by two people. Performed by two people is puppet, as we said. Make sense? No. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. It's two people if it's... Okay, so one second. He, 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 he throws it to the other person. I don't see so that's no. considered landing. Do you think it's a different one in English? In English, there's no. Do you want the Spanish one? Yeah. We're making it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're making it. Do you want to share the, um, the English? It's the next one. It's the next one. Which is the one? Which is the one? Where you holding it? Where we come from? Let's pay them. Next. Allah Amar Rabzeira Chayim. Amar Rabzeira Chayim. We just said that if the thrower, if the the thrower, the thrower is the one that's performing the action here, but the only thing is that if the receiver is moving, if the catcher is moving at the time that it's that is catching it, so then it's not considered that the thrower. Uh, set it down because he's still moving while he's catching it. So it's unlike the someone that's handing it from one hand to the other, where it's there's no really gap. Gap. The receiver could have had the option not to catch it. And that, that's not our issue. Our issue is what is considered the hanacha placing it down when he catches it. The problem is when he caught it, he was still moving, so it still wasn't placed down. So when is it placed down while he's moving? Only when he stops. Who stopped? It wasn't the thrower that stopped. It was the other one that. So who placed it down? Uh -huh. So it was another nice. individual. Two people perform the act of, so of the transfer. So we're saying five people. We're talking about the send. The thrower. The thrower. So there's only, only the thrower. Yeah. Because it doesn't. So it doesn't say. Right. Okay. Amad bin Kaima v'kibel chayev. Here's the question. Why, when the person threw it and he stood in his place, is he chayev? 
Avina Nanach al Gabi Makam Dalad Baleka, but you need to have it resting on a place of four hand breaths. And it, where, did it, where did it rest? In, the, in his hands, in the catcher's hands. It's not four hand breaths. That was our Hulgamara yesterday. Hulgamara yesterday was that to be considered a Hanacha, placing it down, it has to be put in a normal um, location, which that would be a small table or something, something that's four hand breaths. Uh, the, uh, it's not normal to put something, put something on top of that, like uh, poking things sticking up out of the ground. You don't put, that's not where you place something down. You put a, a cup down, a book down, you put it down on a table or uh, something that has some surface. If you put it down on something that's very tiny, that's not a normal way of putting it down. So we asked putting it into the person's hand. It doesn't seem like a normal way. It's not for a hand breath. So, um, so this is what we're discussing. Apparently, Rev. Mayer holds that it's not a problem. Okay. No, we see from here. First question. You don't need four cubits. Is, four, is, is the issue here whether four by four talking is a makom that satisfies hanaka? Yeah. Yeah. That's, if you can do away with that in certain instances, that's what we're asking. We know that a four by four tzvachim is considered is good for hanaka. And we're assuming that it's good for Akira as well. <coughs> right? We just figured that out. It's good for Anaka, it's good for Akira. Um, and, uh, and we're saying mm -hmm. that apparently, according to Reb Meir, the hands of a person is good enough as well. That's what we have, we're, according to Akira. Okay. The Gemara asks, one second, you really didn't get the full story yet. Mm -hmm. You only got half of it, and then you made an assumption. It says, Vidilma Hanaka Hudloi Ba'ina. Maybe when it's landing, it doesn't need four cubits. But what about ha'akira be'ina? That maybe it has to be lifted off a place of four cubits. In other words, the thrower, maybe he's chayev because he took it off something and threw it. But how do you know that if he would take it off someone's hands, that would work? How do you know that that's an akira? If you would take it off someone's hands, right? The Gemara says, v'hanachanami. And even the landing. Dilma de Pashit Knafe, the Kibla, the Kanami Hanacha. How do you know? We said that he caught it in his hands. We think of someone throwing a football, uh, you know, and there's a thrower and there's a receiver, um, and he's catching it in his hands as he's running or, or he stopped, right? There's all these, uh, these options. It's very possible that he threw him, I don't know, his keys or something. He didn't want to catch it. He stretches out the, uh, his um, apron or uh, his coat and he catches it in his coat. And like this, he stre spreads out his fort him, and it lands in it. He doesn't hurt his hands. It's a, that's how, uh, a good way to do it, right? So, so we ha really don't have a proof because that, those details were missing from that. From the, you know, it's the way that it was caught was missing from the price. Amar Ababa. Ababa says, Masnison, the mission is dealing with going, we are, I'm going to adjust the words of the Akar, Mitraskal. I'm very curious if they have an explanation on the side of their trusco. Do they say anything on the side what a trusco is? So you can only explain that a trusco is a light portable table made from braided willow. People ate it, feed on it outside the home. Oh, wow. Okay. So it sounds like a uh, TV, din a TV mm -hmm. dinner table, a small light table. Um, I thought the translation was a basket. But what, what does it say there? Uh, well, there it says it's a basket. Okay, something like that. It's a so he's translating like this. In other words, our mission is going like this. It says basket. It's just like a uh, basket. Uh, that's the commentary. So what we're talking about is oh, what she says. So which is the basket? Yeah, oh, that's where I got that from. So so. We, we were talking about the, the poor person is putting his hand inside the house and the balabai is putting it into the balabai's hand or the balabai is putting it into his, his hand. We missed the detail. There was actually a basket there. And he took something from a basket and he puts it inside and he puts it into the balabai's basket or the opposite. The balabai takes from his basket and puts it in. So the hand is transferring, but there's a basket that's involved in, in the which place, is four by four. which is four by four. Okay, that's a teretz. The Gemara asks, I want to say, because over there, there's a placing down. The Gemara asks, one second. 
The Mishnah didn't say that. The Mishnah said the hand, puts it into his hand. He says, to me, Traskel should be other. Okay, that's a small emendation. Uh, and just say, it means the basket. The basket. Umar says, one second. That answer would work if I have a Traskel, a basket, inside the house. Or Traskel, there's a problem. You got a good answer, but it only works halfway. Why? Because the Ani takes an item and puts it into the Balabayas's basket. It's four by four talking. Excellent. But the half of the Mishnah was talking about where the Balabayas puts it into the Ani's basket, right? That's the other half of the Mishnah. Now, what is a basket in a public domain? If it's four by four talking, a basket in the public domain, four by four tochen, becomes a rishis hayachid. So the balabayas transferred from a private domain to a private domain if he's putting it in a basket. It's a good answer regarding, regarding half of our issue. Of, is it taken off a, a real domain, a real uh, surface? It, it's, it's answering the surface, but it's ruining the domain issue. Okay. I have a question. First of all, what does he need the basket in the Rishis Hayachid for? He just puts it in his hand. It's no, he's put, it says four. he put it into his hand. He's saying, oh, his hand. His hand isn't even, four by four. He, it's even though he, he's in his own Rishis Hayachid in Balabayas? Well, it doesn't need to be that he put it into his hand. It's just the case was that he put it into his hand. Okay. Trying to explain the case. Of course, if he puts it down, that would be, that would, satisfy yeah, the halacha. The problem is that the basket becomes Rosh Hashayachet. The Gemara says, Lehmad Lake Rabbi Yesi Rabbi Yehuda. This is going to be a, in conflict with the opinion of Rabbi Yesi Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yesi Rabbi Yehuda, let's talk about who we, who we have here. So far we said the opinion of Achairim, which is Rabbi Meir, he's over here. We had Rabbi Abba, that explained the Mishnah that we're dealing with the basket. But Abba, I'm not sure where he's going to come in. I'm not sure where about this, he's, but he's definitely on Rhyme. And now we're going to Rabbi Yehuda, who's Rabbi Yehuda's son, son of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda is Rabbi Lai, a student of Rabbi Akiva. He'd be a grand student of Rabbi Akiva. He, it, it's going to be in conflict with Rabbi Yehuda. Right, Why? Rabbi Yehuda was married to Rabbi Kiva's daughter. That would make sense. Is that what you say? Did you say that no. Rabbi Yosi no, is a grandson of Rabbi Yehuda? No, no, a grand a student. The <laughs> Tanya was taught in a bright I don't know a lot about Rabbi Yehuda's wife. I, all I know is that they shared uh, clothing because he was very poor. And they, they didn't have enough clothing for both of them. So you know that because Rabbi Gamliel said, How come you went to the Institute of Smedges? She said, Because my wife had the, had the clothing. Oh. She went out or whatever. So he had to stay on. The Tanya was taught in a Bryce, Rabbi Yisrabi, the Aimer, Rabbi Yisrabi, the says, No, it's kind of a Shusarabim. If someone has a stick in a public area, or oh, uh, David uh, mentioned this yesterday, with uh, a, a mailbox. Someone has a stick in a Rosh Hashanah, a Breshe Traskel, and on top of that stick is a basket. And the basket is for Tvachim. V'zarak v'nachal gabav. And he throws something and it lands on top of the basket. He's chayiv. Aha. According to Rabbi Yisrael, Rabbi Yehuda, the basket in the Rosh Hashanah, sorry, a basket in the Rosh Hashanah becomes a Rosh Hashanah. So our Mishnah would not be able to fit with Rabbi Yisbar Yehuda. Speak Rabbi Yisbar Yehuda. If it would, would fit with Rabbi Yisbar Yehuda, there would be there would be a problem. Look at the problem. Now we have a quote from the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, "Pasha balabais is yadil lachutz." If the homeowner sticks his hand out, and he puts it into the hand of the poor person, it says over there that he's chayiv. The Gemara asks, "Am I chayiv?" Mishnah says, "Yachid kamapet." If it's a trust, right? If we go with your father. He's putting it into a basket. He's taking it from Rosh Hashayach to Rosh Hashayach, a private domain to a private domain. The basket's a private domain. <clears throat> the Gemara answers, it doesn't, it's not necessarily so. Afilu Tamer Rabbi Yisra Rabbi Yehuda. You could say that it does fit with Rabbi Yisra Rabbi Yehuda. How? Hasim l'may l'miyot, tach l'may l'miyot. How does a, 
a, a, um, a basket be in a public area become a private area, only if it's above 10 tzachim. Now, where's the Rashi? Uh, Rashi on Benachal Gabo, interestingly, he says that, you see the good aches over there. Rashi says like this, here's my basket. My basket is on a stick in a, in a public area. This basket becomes a private area, a private domain. So the, the way it's explained is that the edges of this wall, of this, of this, are going to come down, turn it into like a, um, <clears throat> like a, uh, like a box or like a pillar in a public area. And if it's four by four, even though just the top of it is four by four, but that would be like a private area. The whole thing would be just a private area, like a, like a phone book. Hmm. You know, it's a private area in a public area. It's funny because in real estate, you have like in Israel, you have air ranks, like whoever's got the top, the uh, gets above. Uh -huh. I never heard whoever has on top gets below. Yeah, yeah. Really, so this is the walls. Well, when, we're going like to have this here. You have the, this concept here. You have it a lot in, in the sukkah. Um, when you say imaginary walls, the walls go up, walls go down. It's like a fictitious uh, um, uh, Okay. The Gemara says, so what are we going to say over here? It will work like this. It could fit with Rebbe Bar Yehuda. Because Rabbi Yisrael Rabbi Huda was talking about when the basket is above ten fach, and that becomes a real a, a new domain. But the Mishnah is talking about where the basket is below ten fach. Below ten fach, a basket below ten fach is still a rishus So when the balabaya sticks his hands out and puts it into the poor person's basket, which we called his hand in the Mishnah, it was below ten fach and it's, and it's a rishus harabbi. Rabbi Bo, who's over here, Kesaria, um, student of Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Bo, he's one of the Babylon, uh, the 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 uh, Eretz Yisrael Amirai. He's he has a problem with the way things are going here. That's his problem, of course. He says, "Mikatani Chaskel Shabiyada." Does the Mishnah say that there's a basket in his hand that he's putting it into? Well, Yada Kitani, it says his hand. And as we try to adjust it, Rabbi Vo is not satisfied. El Amar Rabbi Vo, Rabbi Vo has a different answer. Going to Shilshul Yada Lamata Mi Gimel, the Kibla. Rabbi Vo says, you had a whole question over here. How does putting it into someone's hand be considered Dalad al Dalad, that it's an ear considered a surface of four by four? The way we're going to do this is that the person puts his hand very low, close to the ground, and we have a rule that anything within three tfachim is considered attached. It's considered attached to the, to the ground. Three, three hand breaths uh, is considered attached. So it's called lovely. So if it's within three tfachim of the ground, so it's considered like you put it on the ground. <coughs> so that's how it's going to be uh, a transfer with an akira and an anach, because his hand was low down. The Gemara says, one second. If you look at the Mishnah, it says that the person was standing. Now you're saying that his hand is close to the ground. My answer is B'Shoicha. He's leaning over. So he's leaning close to the ground, and that's how it's possible. Iba Yaseima, we have another answer, Beguma. That the person is standing in a, in, a, in a ditch, and you're putting it into his hand. And his hand is within three Tvachim of the ground, because even if he's not bending over, because he's in a manhole, and his hand is over there. We buy a same of bananas. If you want, you can say we're dealing with the midget. I'm a Rava. Rava says, This is like bending over backwards. The, the Tana is bending over backwards, bending over to, uh, um, to, to tell you these, you know, obscure, uh, these strange halachas. That's what, in, in order to learn the Mishnah, you have to come up with these. These, yeah, these yeah, strange, uh, cases. strange cases just to get this. We can't say uh, just a regular halacha of someone put it down somewhere and okay. Elama Rava, rather Rava says the following statement, which will leave us uh, satisfied. Yodei Shaladim Chashuva Lake Dalet Al Dalet. You're asking all of these questions, making an assumption that you always need to have a four by four. 
that's only with other items, with other surfaces. Why? Because it's not normal to put something down on top of something that's poking up in a, a little tiny uh, surface. What do you put something down? You put it on a, on a, on a ledge that's for, for, for hand grip. But a person's hand is normal. Put something into his hand. His hand can contain items. That's, it is a normal place to put something. You put the hand it to someone in his hand. Okay. Ravin was a traveler. Ravin brought uh, halachas back and forth between Eretz Yisrael and Babel. And he brings a statement from Rabbi Yechanan, who was an early uh, Eretz Yisrael Amira. He says that a person's hand is like four by four. Amr Avin Amr Rabbi Loi Amr Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Avin says the name of Rabbi Loi in the name of Rabbi Yechanan. Zarek Chayfes. Someone throws an, an, an item. Benach b'teich yadei shel chaveri. Chayev. And it lands in someone's hand. It's Chayev. The person that threw it is Chayev. My Kamashua. What's the Chiddush in it? You threw something and it landed. It landed and we know that the hand, Rabbi Yechanan just told us a second ago, that a hand is considered like a surface, four by four. My Kamashman, Yadish Shalom Chashub like a dollar al dollar. He's trying to tell me that again. Well, I'm Rabbi Yechanan, Chadazim, Rabbi Yechanan already said it once. We learn statements of Amiraim like the way the Gemara learns the uh, Chumash, you know, an extra word. When you don't make a statement that he said already. Would Rabbi Yechanan say this? But you need to have a reason for that. So, uh, this was Rabbi 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 Before we had Rav and Amar Rabbi Yeshman. Yeah. Normally, when you acquire something, you have to do it on Shabbat. Yeah. Right? So yeah. most business deals, the main business deals, they don't have a handshake. Can yeah. someone say yeah. here that the hand, in the other hand, is as if it's a Shusayach and you have a Shusayach, and therefore that's what makes the business deal. That's an interesting, uh, interesting thought. You always say usually the, the, hand, usually the, 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 the handshake is learned, is understood as, a, um, as an oath. It's comparable to, a, to an oath. Yeah, that's well, um, but I'm asking you. In halacha, it's kias kafas, the type of neda. So that's not, oh, you're saying that it's a, that it's actual trends. I'm saying that you're actually taking something. I'm not sure. Okay. 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 So Rabbi Yechelen said this one time. Rabbi Yechelen has a chiddush. What's the chiddush? Chiddush is like this. The first case of Rabbi Yechelen was where a person intended to put it into someone else's hand. That's considered that that's where he intended it to go. So therefore, his intention helps it become a surface, which is considered like four by four cloth, which is good. The case where he threw it was where he didn't intend it for it to land in his hands. He threw it and it happened to land in his hands. Maybe only, when you don't intend for it to land there, maybe it's not really considered a surface. that it's considered a surface even without intention. Yeah, said that's where it's asking. You see, the first one was just a statement. It could be to answer the Mishnah. It didn't say exactly. He just made a rule of Yadi Shalom Khashavalikadalit, which helps us answer the Mishnah. Now we have a specific halacha with throwing. So what's the, what's the chiddush of the throwing? The chiddush here is that even without intention, when it lands, still. Yeah. That's what I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have it. We have it. Amar Rav and Amar Rabbi Loi, Amar Rabbi Yechanan. Another statement from the same uh, group of Amiran. Amad bim kaima b'kibel is chayev. Akar bim kaima b'kibel is patur. We had this right when we started today in the name of the mayor, which the Gemara is going to quote in a second. Uh, if there's a thrower and a catcher, a receiver, so if the person throws it and the, and the receiver stands still, then the person that threw it did a complete malacha. But if the receiver is moving while he's 
what's it called when he was running while he practiced uh, when I worked for them in sport? Sport time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so then the thrower is going to be Pater. No? Wide, wide end and shoot, he's running and he's catching football. Wide end? Well, it depends where he is. Uh -huh. the guys usually run and run. So then he's going to be puzzled because who's putting it down? Not the one that threw it, the one that was running while he was catching. He's the one. When he stops, he's putting it down. Okay. Tani Nami Hachi, this was also Tani Nabrai Sachi. Remember, Omad Ben Kaimu Vakibal is Chayev Akim Kaimu Kimu is Pater. We're introducing this here because we have a question. We mentioned it before, but that was just an introduction to tell us that we're about to ask something. Boy Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan has a question. Zorak Chayfetz, someone throws an item. And he runs because of a kibla, and he catches it himself. Mao, how does this? What's going to be the halach? Traveling. This is traveling. Now, now you switch the vegetable. <laughs> there was something in, in football. They, if you're holding the football and they, they uh, two hand touches, they tag you. But if you throw it in the air or something. Is that an exemption? Can you get away with that? But then you pass to yourself. That's no good. That's right? two hands. That's not real football. It's not real football. Okay. <laughs> so, I don't know any of the real you stuff. Back you know, back. So here, the person <coughs> is cashing it himself. So what's the column here? It's a very strange question. Let's see. Mike Boyle, what's this question? Amar Ravad the Barava. Ravad the Barava explains the question. It's a, it's a difficult question to, to explain, but the, I, what's happening here is like this. When the person threw it, so it, 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 it had an akira, it was lifted off, and it also had an intended hanaka, where it was supposed to land. The person came and intercepted his original hanacha and made it a, a, a separate hanacha. Do we say that that's not considered like an akira and the hanacha coming from the same person? That's true. Of it. So do we look? Do we look at the person and say, look, there's one person here that did both of them. So that's how it should be. Or do we look at it as not at the person that's doing it, but at the action? And why, why do we say that one person has to do both? Because the action needs to be connected. You need to have an akira that's associated with anatha. Now in this action, the, the uprooting had an intended hanacha, but that's not the hanacha that actually happened. So the, the, there's no association between the uprooting and the putting it down. Those are, those are disconnected actions. So do we look at the action so do we look at the person if one person that's involved maybe he had like a wall and it was something out there just so he could get through the door and he had to throw it over the wall to catch uh -huh. it on the other side and then he can't yeah. catch the wall uh -huh. <laughs> no but that doesn't work sorry so how, how do you get through the wall oh. <laughs> he fit through <laughs> it was a blown up ball it was a blown up ball ask ellie from what's his name ellie the guy who's the shoulder the red beard Take oh, him. Look at this. There's no wall that stops me, no locked door that stops me. Mara says, get in, take him. Such a good question. We leave it as a question. <laughs> right. If we would move in, the, in between in Rishuyas, and he's catching it. The way, uh, the way that I was explaining it, It could be that he didn't, that his intention was not to catch it. He ended up catching it. I'm not sure if his intention was to catch it, if the same Shiloh would be there. I don't know. Rabbi Echanan says like this. Someone puts his hand into his friend's courtyard. Someone else's courtyard, I don't know. <clears throat> He's in Rosh Hashanah, and there's a, a rain uh, a drip that's coming down off the roof or whatever. Uh, actually, right here we don't have that yet. Here, right here we just have. He's just catching rain, and he takes the rain out. 
catching rain this week. It has rain outside. It, maybe it's, it's <laughs> dripping off the roof. It's raining over there. I, I didn't understand. It's around the I didn't understand why the original catching is not is not considered by Kira, even though it's coming. Oh, so one second, one second, one second, one second. Hey, you're, you're, you're a step in. No, I, I know, but I didn't understand that. We didn't say it. Right here, it's just his hand. Okay, so we say hi. He's catching rain, and he transfers the, the uh, location of it. It was coming from a private domain, and he transfers it into a public domain. Maskevler, Rabzeira, Rabzeira asks a question to Rabavin. He's saying this in the name of Rabzeira. Mali yatina chaveira, mali yatina shemayim, yu lo yavad akira. One sec. In order to, to violate the rules of, of Shabbos, of transferring from one location to another, you need to lift it up and you need to put it down. This person, if he would have put his hand in and his friend would have put something into his hand and he transfers it, so he didn't do the Akira. So what's the difference if his friend puts it into his hand or if Kevin puts it into his hand? He didn't remove it from a surface. So God removed it from a surface and put it into his hands. He only did half, half the malacha. Should be exempt. Leite makibel elakala. My answers. He actually removed it. Why? Because he pushed it over. He doesn't say exactly how what's going on over here, but the rain is dripping down. He pushes from one hand. It's like moving it over like this, and he catches it in the other hand. So it's this hand that moved it into that hand. And now he's the receiver. Sorry, that's, he's, that's, what, that's, that's considered, considered that. Lifting. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, as if he's lifting. Okay. Yeah, We're trying to, to, to get the story yeah. to fit with the wording of the Yechanan. So the Gemara says, one second. Babina nakirami al gabi makam dalad but you need to remove it off some off a surface. What surface did it have? If you just pushed it or pushed the stream, or pushed the droplets over? What is that? Is that like diverting? Let's say you know, yeah. like like have a gutter and you right. just divert the exactly. water. Exactly. So you moved it like this. So it, it it didn't come from God. It's coming from. It didn't, yeah. Not that it didn't come from God, but uh, yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. that God. I, I, I know we're learning Gemara. Let's not get carried away. But there was a uh, there was an act. Of, of uprooting it. Okay. I give up. Amar. Amar Abchia. Amar Abchia. Brader Avuna. Going to call out me al Gabi Akaisal. Okay. He's taking it off the wall. Stripping down the wall. And the wall is Dalit al Zalit. Now, it's assumed here that it's not on top of a wall, it's dripping down the side of a wall. It is, it, but, it, but just like when, when you throw a ball and mm -hmm. someone's running well, and tough. catching it, it's not, a, it's not a hanacha. How is dripping down a wall a hanacha for an akira? Yeah. Wait till the end of the Gemara because all of these, it's going to go through. I, I didn't read the end. I didn't read the end. Al Gabi Kaisel Nami Very good. On the on the I'm wall also it didn't land it's moving down the wall. Kedama Rava because on the Rava Rava maybe Rava. Rava says the Rava says um, <clears throat> it's the wall is on a slant on an incline, and we're assuming that on an incline that's considered like like it stopped. It has like a small uh, uh, it slows down it stops on the incline even though it could still fall. Achanami because on the Rabba said about regarding something else that the wall had an incline is considered like it stopped. So here also we're talking about it's flowing down the wall and that's considered like it stopped. Doesn't matter what type of Muslim. One second, let's see. Where, uh, Rabba, where was this statement? Ahad It's taught in a Mishnah. Oh yeah, Someone is reading from a scroll. Now. Say it was a book, but in those days it was a scroll. He's reading Allah Skufa on the doorstep. And one end of the scroll rolls out of his hands. And it rolls, it rolls away. A skufa is, means a doorstep or it means like a windowsill. Maybe it's a windowsill. Um, so he can, he's allowed to pull it back up. He's allowed to pull it back up. Back to himself. Goes by where Even he's though he it. was in a Rishasayachin. 
the scroll rolled into a Rosh Hashanah in public domain, but he's still attached, strings attached. He can take it back. He occurred to break Shagag. No, he, this is on the door. If the door stepped before. Now he's on a roof. When a skalgal, I say from the other, and it rolls away from him. Actually, he rolls one half of it away until it reaches 10 fachim. That means it's going, reaching the, the ground, but it's 10 fachim off the ground. So he's allowed to pull it back. Once it reaches within 10 fachim of the ground, you can't pull it back. So now you have half the, the scroll is exposed. And it's a, it's a holy scroll. So what you do is, so it's not exposed and you can't pull it back. It's going to have to stay there the rest of Shabbos. You turn it over the other way. So you don't have the letters exposed to the, uh, whatever's going on outside on the birds or whatever. You don't, that's, that's um, disrespectful. So you turn it over on the other side, so it's protected at least, and that's how you leave it. You can't pull it back. It's connected to the source, though. So yes. Part of the same source. Uh, Vinan Vah. We ask, Amai Why do you have to turn it over? It didn't rest. It didn't rest anywhere. And you, could, you should be able to pull it back. You didn't even turn it over. It's oh. pulled away. Like, how are you going to Well, no. It it over? <laughs> it's like it was, it it's like 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 straps. Yeah. 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 So, why yeah would this was was a so why like would the difference be able with to rain to dripping down? A dis- get dripping it down. Uh, so one second. That's what we're going to get back to. What if it was bad by itself? Rava says because of Meshuppah that it did rest. Because the, the, the wall of the house, he's on the roof, the wall of the house was a slanted wall. So it really is resting the whole time. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> the scroll is on the, is, on the, is on the slanted wall. And we see that that's considered resting. Back to our story. We had water that's dripping down the wall, and it's, like it's, it's considered like it's resting. Okay. The Gemara says, one second. The comparison is not good because. A book, a, a scroll on a slanted wall is resting, but water on a slanted wall is not resting. Do we say that that's considered resting? It's, it's making its way down. Rava says that's not the pshat in Rabbi Yechanan. You're taking it out of a puddle. Mar says guma pshita. The puddle. That's obvious. I need Rabbi Yechanan to tell me if you lift water in one area, you take it to the uh, to another area that you're going to be chayav. I mean, like what? What exactly are you telling me? You have to. You're going to tell me with every item, water, like one. You transferred from one location to another. You did the full act. The Lord says, no, this is a finish. I could have thought that water that's floating on top of other water is not considered resting. So, Kamash Malan, that it's considered resting. follows his reasoning. Water on top of water. He knows I'm only taking the surface water. And it's resting on top of the water that's underneath it. That's considered resting. But if you have a walnut that's floating on the water, that's not considered resting, that's considered in motion. And if you take something that's in motion, then that's not a full act of transfer because you have to take it from its resting and transfer it and then put it down into a resting position. But this was moving before it started. So is that both a response to both issues? In other words, it's a response to dripping water that, hey, that's not... And it's an answer that He's the reason why we're talking surface. about this, the reason why it isn't right. uh, because of that. Yeah. It's because it was Muna. Right. So what do you do with the red and red? Boy, Rav, Rav has a question. Very interesting question. I have a, a, a puddle or a pool of water, a stream, and there's a vessel, some sort of bowl or a vessel that's floating on the stream, and there's a walnut that's inside the vessel. We said that the a walnut on top of water is considered in motion, and it's not considered resting. If you remove it on Shabbos, so you, you didn't do an Akira because it was moving already beforehand. 
So let's say <coughs> there's a vessel that's in between the walnut and the water. Do we say like this? What's your egg? Is this a vessel in between the water and the water? Well, it's like this. It's like this. It's like this. This is floating on the water. Okay. This is the vessel. And there's a, a walnut in, in it. It's going like this. People on the are pushing forward. So, 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 do I say, <laughs> do I say <laughs> that, do I say, do I say <laughs> that the walnut is on the water and it's in motion? Or do I say, <laughs> Do I say that the, the walnut is on is in a vessel and it's resting? Or do I go and I say that the walnut is on is in a vessel and it's resting? Or do I go and Or do I go look at the vessel and say one second? But I say the vessel is moving. So how do I look at this? Right. Very good. Very good. As I was learning this, I'm like thinking about like. It's not enough. It's very confusing. But it's bosses the double shilamuna. So it shouldn't be right. So this is where it comes up at this time. Um, <laughs> about the taste of here discusses making a Kenyan uh, how to acquire a boat. As Chaim Jun, he knows how to acquire a boat. Okay, take it. The Gemara doesn't have any answer to this. Shemen should suffer gabayayin. Okay, concentrate because we're discussing, uh, we're switching topics for a moment. A oil that's right. floating on top of wine. Machlekes Rabbi Yechonon ben Nuri Barabanan. This is a machlekes between Rabbi Yechonon ben Nuri, that's a Tana, and the Rabbanan. The Tanana was taught like this. Shemen should suffer gabayayin. Oil that's floating on top of wine. It could be water as well, but because we're, we're changing topics here. We're discussing truma and the nugget full yain b'shemen. And the way it works with truma is that if someone went to the mikvah because he was impure, he needs to wait for nightfall to become fully pure. If he's in the middle between the mikvah and nightfall, we call, call it full yain. And he can make, he can still have, he still has a slight impurity. The first mission in Brachas, mm-hmm. when did the kayanim meet the truma at nightfall? So when they come into the truma, that means that they went to the mikvah during the day. So if he's going to touch truma, he's going to make it puzzle. It's a, 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 a minor level of tuma. So he's touching the oil, but lay puzzle al Hashem in bilvad. He only makes puzzle, only makes tummy the oil. The wine that's underneath the oil, he didn't touch. Rabbi Yechonah Menuri and Mishnei Mechubar Mzal. So Rabbi Yechonah Menuri says that they're both connected. Amar Rabbav and Amar Rabbi Lai, Amar Rabbi Yechonah. The same combination of Amiran says, A person is carrying food and drink, and he's walking in and out the entire day. In and out of Rishasayach and Rishasarab. Something like that. Now, could be he's changing his mind, he put it on not to go out, and then he decides to go out. He has to stop first and then walk outside and go outside and then stop, I guess. Stopping, which is turning it into a Hanukkah, but really, I, I, apparently we're looking for an Akira as well, because when he put it on, he wasn't planning on going outside. That's how Rabbi Sarah, how Rashi put it. So, so we're coming between the Rishis Yach and Rishis Rab, and the, the stopping needs to be a stopping to rest. Mimai, how do you know this? Mida, Mamar, Teich, Dalet, Ames, Omar, Lafash, Pater, Lekate, Pizchayev. Someone is walking four cubits, and he stops in the middle of the four cubits to rest, and then he continues another two cubits. He's exempt, but Lekate. But if he's not resting, he's just, he stopped because he was adjusting at the package on his uh, shoulders, the cutter is on the shoulders himself, but it means to adjust it, then he's going to be chayev. But chutzal dal ramas, amad lafash is chayev, and the cutter is potter. If he stops after walking for ramas, then it's exactly the opposite. If he stops to rest, then that's considered placing it down. But if he doesn't stop to rest, then he didn't place it down. Then he's going to be exempt because the stopping is considered the hanacha. 
Dr. Food, this is like when you're walking home from shore and not in there, and you stuff something like that money or something exactly. in your pocket. You keep, you exactly. keep going, you don't stop. Exactly. This is that tomorrow. When you're walking home, and you're walking home from Shoal, and you can keep walking. Um, so far, what we've learned, this is but um, what we've learned would be that you continue walk, walking, and if you're going to place it down anywhere, you should place it on something that's not Dalit Svachim on by Dalit Svachim. Dalit or Gimel? Dalit Svachim. You know, I you should not place it. Doesn't matter. No, it, has to, it should be above three Svachim from the ground. Should you, above? Mm -hmm. you should place it. Let's say mm -hmm. if there's a, uh, a ah, fence yeah. that has a little post. That that would be yeah, something that you could place it on yeah, because yeah. that's not a normal thing. To, uh, it wouldn't be considered a uh, uh, yeah. That's what we've learned from what. Uh, okay, you have to yeah, ask Rav uh, exactly, but from what what we know in the Gemara. Okay. So let's say you're talking about my, a mailbox. What if the mailbox is like screwed into your house? That's that's like my, my Kamash Milan. What is he coming to tell me? Uh, it's a shigmar. <laughs> He's trying to tell me that when he lifted it up, he didn't have that intention, and therefore he needs to stop in order to to rest, in order to walk out. And uh, that needs to be an akira with the intention to take it out of the domain. already said this once. If someone is moving items from one corner of his house to another, and he changed his mind. He's not putting it down in the corner. He's taking it out. He's, while he's carrying it, he decides he's going to move and take it outside. He's exempt. Because he didn't have that intention immediately. That's what Rashi was saying before, that he needed to stop just to have the Akira. So what are you saying? That you need to stop just to have, uh, to stop and rest in order for it to be considered that you're taking it outside? We already said that once. My answer is, I'm right, you know, there's, these are two students of Rabbi Yechanan. Okay, there's no problem. Two students are saying the same statement. <coughs> one of them said it like this, one of them said it like that, and it's not a problem. Okay, let's leave it over here. Just, you know, the best way to deal with the wine, wine that has oil floating above it is to get a straw. That's the best way to deal with it. Yeah.